Hello everybody, this is Ricardo and welcome to another episode of Retro Gaming with Ricardo. Today's game is Pac-Mania on the Atari ST. Now Pac-Mania is an arcade conversion from the arcade game of the same name. Released in, by Namco in 1987 and distributed by Atari Games in the US and Europe, it did run on a Namco System 1 hardware and was the last arcade game in the Pac-Man series until 1996. It's a pseudo 3D interpretation of the classic maze game Junior, using an oblique view and as many features and elements of the original 1980 Pac-Man arcade game as they possibly could, as well as several other new features. As in Pac-Man, the objective of Pac-Mania is to score as many points as possible. The player controls Pac-Man and attempts to eat all the pellets in a maze, while avoiding being caught by the ghosts who chase him around. The player can eat power pellets that cause the ghosts to turn dark blue and become vulnerable. The player can then go and eat the ghosts for extra points, sending them back to the regenerator to return to their original colour and behaviour. Now differences from general Pac-Man. Pac-Mania contains several new features and significant differences from its original counterpart. The most noticeable change was the view used, especially in cabinet projection and an oblique pseudo 3D format in which Pac-Man always occupied the center of the screen. A virtual camera follows him around. More special features include the ability of Pac-Man to jump over the ghosts. Some ghosts, however, cannot be jumped over. The grey ghosts, you can't jump over those. The ghosts include the returning Binky, Pinky, Inky and Clyde from the original Pac-Man and Sue from Miss Pac-Man and Pac-Land, who is now purple instead of orange. Unlike her original appearance where she was a replacement of Clyde, she now homes in on Pac-Man's direction will follow him around. There are two new ghosts, Green and Steel Grey, that bounce whenever Pac-Man bounces. In later rounds, up to nine ghosts can be present in a single round. Also, bonus objects in this game not only include the traditional point-scoring fruits, but also power-up items which can have random effects, such as doubling point values of ghosts until death, or causing Pac-Man to move much faster than normal until a power pellet wars off. The game takes place in four environments, Block Town made of Lego-like building blocks, Pac-Man's Park, an oblique version of the original Pac-Man maze, Sandbox Land, where walls are made of a pyramid, and Jungle Steps, which appear as pathways with no railings, resembling a set of steps that rise up towards the back of the maze. There's also a secret maze in the Sega Master System version which can be reached by eating all the regular pellets on the first round and then eating the special item that appears in the centre of the maze. The game has a limited number of rounds after which the player is shown a brief ending and production credits. You are then prompted for your initials if you have been placed on a high score cable. The number of rounds varies by version 23 in Japanese, 19 in the US. This has been Pac-Mania and I've been Ricardo. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Retro Gaming. Please check back for future videos in the series.